Hey there, happy Wednesday. Welcome to another craft night with friends. So we are working on the embroidery of the month uh, from Penguin and Fish and it is this cute little hummingbird. We are hopefully going to get all of these flowers done today. So thanks so much for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so I'm here for about an hour and I work through projects from beginning to end uh, live here on YouTube and Facebook. So thank you for joining me. Let's get working on our hummingbird embroidery today. All right, so I have, I have uh, the the front of the cover here on the back I have my pattern so I have this nearby to tell me what stitches to use and what colors to use so I have that near me uh, let's get down at this again okay so I think we got pretty far yesterday we finished this whole section up here and actually we did all I think a lot of the or I guess we didn't do the pink yesterday we did this green green yesterday um, so I want to finish up this the little green leaves down here, start the green here, um, and just kind of finish this area here, these little French knots, and uh, we are real close to working on our little hummingbird here. So it just fits just perfect with a little sticker. I like that he he's just the right size there. So um, this is our embroidery of the month kit for June. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have started yours. Um, I know we got a few more orders in for them today too, so that's awesome. We'll get those sent out. All right, so I'm gonna do these two leaves here. This is that lime green, so this is the first time we're using uh, the lime. I will actually be stitching uh, the sample for next month's Embroider of the Month uh, tomorrow I'll be working on that so I won't get to show it quite yet but it is being worked on oh that's a cute idea Gretchen says she's gonna make pillows out of her hummingbird and last month's butterfly block that'd be fun oh Colleen that's a bummer sorry to hear about uh yeah Facebook being weird. That's why I'm, I'm happy I'm on both um, YouTube and Facebook. So if one's being weird for, for you, check out the other one. All right, let's get these threads together. I'm using three strands of floss for this. Oh, let's run it through the thread conditioner. I have that sitting out here today. Sylvia, I feel like if I said anything, I would be giving it away. So I'm not gonna, not gonna answer two legs, four legs, or wings. <laughs> not gonna answer that today. Oh, uh, Gretchen, I love that idea. Gretchen uh, says, Alyssa, did you, did you see my post about maybe carrying floss bobbins and card holders in your shop? That is something we have been talking about. I'd like to put something together for that. So maybe soon we will we'll see but that's a great suggestion oh bummer amy well you can get the pdf of the raccoon sampler that's free right away all right let's uh weave in the end here It's a little close to the, close to the um, hoop. I don't usually like stitching this close to the hoop. It just, uh, I always hit the, hit the loop there, the hoop. All right, we're ready. Just this little bit here, and then we'll travel behind, get this little 
flick of a leaf here. Oh, yes, uh, Jane and Molly. Um, the Hummingbird will be available till the end of the month, so till the end of June. Um, and then, uh, yes, they're only available for the month. We do um, bring some back occasionally, but that's not always guaranteed. Um, like some of the some of the kits in our um, shop right now are embroidery of the months from last year. Um, so we might bring a few back. Maybe the butterfly, I did kind of like that one. I like all of them, but uh, we'll see. So I, I don't have any plans right now on bringing any of them back, but I'm hoping that uh, we, we figure out how to do that. Oh, Colleen says on YouTube, oh, she was asking on Facebook uh, to guess, like I was saying, I was going to work on my um, July embroidery of the month. I'm working on stitching up the sample tomorrow, and she asked if it was going to be, uh, if it had like two legs or four legs or wings or, or what. <laughs> and that's what I said I was not going to answer. Oh, Kathy. Um, Kathy says, I'm just starting tonight. Can these be added into a quilt? Uh, absolutely. Um, if the quilt is, if the quilt is not made yet, then you can just use this as, as one of your blocks, like feel free to trim it down or, um, trim the edge and then sew, you know, more fabric around it and then sew it right into your quilt. If you already have a quilt done and you'd like to add it to the quilt, I'd kind of suggest, uh, stitching it just onto the fabric like this and then per and then maybe applying it to the finished quilt so like pinning it all to the um, finished quilt and then just like doing a little itty bitty stitches around the edge to hold it there um, or you could use like a fusible web webbing to um, fuse it to the back of your embroidery and then fuse that to the quilt that would be another way to do it uh, I wouldn't attempt, I mean, you could try, I've never done this before, but you, it, I just imagine it would be difficult to, to stitch it to a finished quilt, but only get through that top layer of the quilt. Uh, you probably could manage that, but I don't know. I feel like that'd be pretty difficult to do. So I'd say stitch it first, make it easy and then applique it on Otherwise, like I said, if you haven't made the quilt yet, um, stitch it first and then just have it be one of the blocks. Oh, you want to make a, a quilt for your great-granddaughter? Oh, that sounds amazing. That's so sweet. Yeah, so if you haven't made it yet, I would just stitch it first and then just incorporate it into the, into the quilt somewhere. That's a great idea. I know a lot of people... Um, I like doing that, and I, I know some other people here have taken some embroideries and put it into a quilt. All right, so we got that little feller done. I love the little variations in the greens there. So this bit here, um, this little mini stem and these little baby leaves there are also this color, so I have, you know, a lot on the on the, on the um, needle yet. So I think I might travel through the backs of these stitches to about here and then jump and then get that, get that part done. And then next I'll do, I think the rest of this green flower, dark green flower. Oh, no problem, Jane and Molly. Um, uh, yes. Feel free to ask any questions and uh yep so just the end of the month for this this pattern i am going to be just so just so you know i am going to be doing some 
I'm going to start releasing patterns that aren't Embroidery of the Month. So there'll be new patterns that are just going to be around, um, just that won't go away. So I know that this is, this is tough, like, because these, these guys go away, our Embroidery of the Months, um, when we're, when we're done with the month. But, um, I am going to start having more and more pattern releases, or, like, kit releases, uh, that are going to stick around, so we won't have to worry so much. And this will just be something special. Oh, Colette! Colette's asking, have you ever tried that coloring technique, crayon, or colored pencil? I have! Um, I've only done it a couple times, but we did do it here once. So I do have a little series of videos on it, just from doing the lives. We did it with the Tweet House pattern, um, one of my embroidery patterns with um, like a little birdhouse and two little birds. We colored it with, did we do crayon or colored pencil? I think we tested both out. Like I think in the first video we tested them, but you know what, I think we did color pencil. But yeah, oh, it's so fun. I, I definitely want to give that a try again. Actually, this would have been a really pretty one to do it with. Like just adding a little bit of pink blush to some of these. By pink blush, I mean like colored pencil. Pink colored pencil. pencil To some of these little bits. A little bit of green and just a little bit of uh, extra green or yellow even to add a little spark. Um, would have been fun in the, in the hummingbird. This would have been a great one to, to try that coloring technique. I think the trick for that, um, the trick for the coloring is just to be very light and it, like don't press hard with your colored pencil or crayon, just be light and if you want it a little darker then add another layer to it, like just go little very light layer by layer. Okay, so the next the, the Gretchen's asking, can you explain the new subscription you're offering? So it's actually not going to be a subscription. Um, so I'm just going to have more kits. <laughs> That's really all it is, all there is to it. So we'll still have the embroidery of the month, how it's working right now. I know that's changed a little bit. I can talk about that some more. Uh, but that's changed since we read the website. Uh, but we'll still keep having the embroidery of the month, which is a like a new design that's just avail available for the month that we stitch live here. Um, but I want to just add uh, more kits and fun new designs to the shop, just just the general shop. So uh, it is just going to be more kits and more designs and more patterns. Uh, so that's 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 it. So I'll be releasing. I'm hoping to release more of those more often. Um, I'm not sure we'll stitch them. I mean, we're not going to stitch them live during you know the third week. That'll that'll stay to the embroidery of the month. But uh, I am hoping to do some of them live, or maybe a different variation of them live, and then uh, you know do other stitch videos for them. Uh, but those will be just kind of like. Um, designs that stay in the shop. Ooh, Jennifer says, I would love to learn how to color the blocks. So we should, so that'd be kind of fun. So we do have the, the last week of our months open and uh, I would love to maybe play with embroidery some more during that week, but maybe we can play around a little bit. So the embroidery of the month will always just kind of maybe stitch it as is, but maybe that last week of the month we could play around with some embroidery, like get one of the other patterns out and um, try some things out with it maybe. That would be fun, like coloring it in. That's 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 a fun, fun little extra thing to do. All right, done with that green there. There's a lot more of this green in the hummingbird, but we'll, we'll, we'll stick to this guy um, for now and then we'll do the hummingbird all at once. So I'm done with this green for the flower parts at least. Yeah, I was nervous too about coloring with my, um, you know, with the colored pencils. Actually, you know what? Do I have that near me? Oh no, I don't. I thought maybe I have that that one that I colored in like within arm reach, but I I put all those in a bin. <laughs> in a uh, I, I made a like a past embroideries container, um, like in case I need them for photos or something yet. But I had those 
I had that one that we colored in just sitting out here uh, for the longest time, but now I think it's in a bin. Well, maybe tomorrow I'll look for that and um, grab it so we can take a look at that. Adding some color to an embroidery. Okay, I, this is all... I got that little piece of thread. Oh, this isn't going to get me far. Okay, I am not sure this green thread is going to get me this whole entire... Um, this whole uh, uh, leaf right here, but we're going to do our best. So I think I'm going to weave in... I like mapping it out. I, I'm going to weave in to the backs of these stitches, and then I think I'm going to jump to the center. I'll go stitch the center, then jump up and do this kind of inner line, and then go to the outer line and around. It would have been, that would have been a perfect path um, if I didn't think I was going to run out of floss here. Uh, so, eh, we'll do what we can. Let's run it through the thread conditioner, though. That's been kind of fun. <laughs> the bin's actually probably... Yeah. Everything's a little bit confusing because we, you know, we were out of town and we haven't unpacked from being in a town yet. So I think I, I think I emptied one of those bins so I could bring it out of town and carry some craft stuff um, to my parents' house. And so now I'm not even sure where those embroideries are. They're somewhere, somewhere nearby, but I'd have to do a little bit digging. So maybe I'll, I'll find them for tomorrow. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, Colleen's asking, do you color first or stitch first? You color first. I mean, you could probably do it the other way, but um, what we did and what I've sort of, you know, read about in my little research of it is that you color it first. So you transfer the design, um, whether you trace it, you know, with a pencil or water-soluble pen. Actually, I think we, I think we tried to stick to like just pencil to trace it on. And, um, or you could do like, you know, if it's pre-printed like this, something, something so you have the lines on basically. Uh, so then, and something that in theory you probably wouldn't want to get wet right away. So that's why maybe not the water soluble marker, maybe just like a, a sharp pencil or, you know, like I said, if it's already, if you have an iron on or if it's pre-printed like this, then, then you already got it on there. Uh, but yeah, then you do your little layers of color. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just nice if you get a little bit of the edge. You might not need to fill in the whole thing. But yeah, it's just that light touch um, and then adding layers. And you can practice on... This is what we did. We practiced on a little piece of fabric at first just to get the feel for it. Because um, that stuff will grip on the fabric a little bit differently than paper. So anyway... I'd give it a little test and then uh, you uh, color it all in and then you put a paper towel on top of the whole thing and then press it and that will like get any of the extra like wax or anything like that it kind of sets the sets the color I suppose um, so at that point then I, I think we stitched it after that which is really fun Pretty sure that was our process. Uh, if anyone remembers differently, let me know. I think we did that a little over a year ago. Any special kind of colored pencil? I really don't think so. From what it seemed from people, what people were saying, it was just any colored pencil, or you could use crayon. That would totally work too. Um, so it didn't seem as special as what I would have expected. I'm sure there's some permanent differences. Um, I don't think I've washed mine. But in theory, like the pressing it should kind of hold the color a little bit. Uh, that'd be worth a test maybe, doing, doing some coloring on a scrap piece and, and giving it a wash. I'm sure it fades. I mean, if you were to like paint it in with like a acrylic paint or something that would probably be more permanent but just to tint it uh with with the color pencil or crayon that seemed to work uh 
I wonder if I do a back stitch and then a forward stitch, if that would let me have enough thread. I don't like doing that, really. I'm going to start doing it here. Uh, I think it's hard to do this forward stitch where you come up through the back stitch. I think it kind of distorts the stitches a little bit, but... Um, I don't know, we're going to give it a little try here. Oh, so Jenna says, I use Inktense watercolor pencils and then heat set. Nice. That sounds great. Yeah, watercolor pencils, that's a good idea. I mean, you could probably get like a watercolor effect on it too if you did get that wet. Uh, Christy, I do believe that pressing sets the color in. So now that that's one of those terms that I'm like, is that a real thing or not? <laughs> it's a thing that people say, but um, I'm going to just assume that that's true. I, I have not run my own serious experiment on that, though. Like, um, doing one with just coloring, and then doing one that I color and press, and then I wash them both and, and see the difference. I've, I haven't done any real testing. I'm going on what, what other people have, have said. But supposedly, the pressing kind of sets the color, yes. All right, yeah, I'm going to run out of floss. Ooh, I, I actually don't have that much more to go, though. So, I don't know, I'm going to keep going this forward-backward stitch. It does preserve floss a little bit. Yeah, it's looking okay. It gives us the... still looks like a back stitch. I'm just kind of constructing the back stitch a little bit differently. I'm going forward a stitch, which actually kind of pulls up on the prior stitch. That's why I don't really like use, doing it this way. But it does extend the floss. So if I'm in a if I'm in a pinch for floss, kind of like how we are now. Usually I don't start it that early, but um, I will do this method just to squeeze out a couple more stitches if it's a back stitch, which it often is for us, for me here. Ooh, Jenna says, I colored with the pencils, those those watercolor pencils, and then used water to shade it. Ooh, I bet you that just, that just sounds beautiful. Love that idea. Actually, I think we might have some watercolor pencils around here that um, John had in school or something. We have all sorts of art supplies hanging out here. Um, I should try it with those watercolor pencils. That'd be really fun. We're totally going to make it. I'm so happy. I don't have to get more green out. Yay! At least not yet. I will for the butterfly up here. Not the butterfly. The uh, hummingbird up there. Okay, last up. Sons of floss left. That worked out swell. Okay, let's weave in the end. There's not much to weave in doing that either. I guess we'll just go these two. Grab as many threads as I can going back. Two. in there. All right, so I think I um, kind of want to do this pretty little bud. Actually, maybe I'm going to do this thing now. I got I got the blue right here, and I think I probably have enough. We'll end with the end this little area. Well, I guess we got those little French knots, but we'll pretty much end this area with that pink bud. So I'm going to run this through the conditioner just for funsies. Smells good. All right, have a great day, Jennifer. <laughs> Colleen, he would have no idea 
know where to even look for the bin. They all look the same. They're just stacked up on top of each other. So I'd have to do some digging. But I'll get the, um, I'll do that when we're done here and I'll find those, that colored pencil piece. All right. Strategy for this guy. So I, I think I'm gonna go to the middle piece, come around to the end and then jump back and then get this outside piece coming back down and then come back up. That's my map, that's what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna start in the green here. I should have maybe wove into a little different area, but we're fine. Okay, I'm doing that inside, inside line that will go to the outside. Um, Gretchen, it's up to you. Gretchen's asking if she should outline her satin stitching. I don't. I think it actually looks, well, it depends, I mean, what you want it to look like, but I do like just, I think it looks a little cleaner with just like no outline. Um, I mean, it's a pretty look if you do put an outline around it, there's totally nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but I do, I do like um, just, it, just the satin stitch on its own. So that, that's how I would say, but either way uh, works. It's just kind of the look you want. I think the more traditional way would be doing it without. Hmm. Actually, this, actually, I think I'm going to jump to here now. And then we'll go around the edge coming back down. I think this swoop should be on the outside. Ooh, Lynn says I made 10 jars of strawberry jam, 8 jars of strawberry rhubarb jam. Oh, too tired to craft. Just watching. Nice. <laughs> You've been crafting all day. That's a, that's a lot of lot of work. How fun, though. Yum. That sounds awesome. Oh, Jane and Molly, feel free to ask however many questions you want. Um, if I don't answer, it's probably because I didn't, it probably whipped by too quick. Uh, yes, so each week of the month, we, we work on a different project. We are, we are finishing up, even though it's going to take a while, <laughs> two quilting projects. So that's, that's um, week one. We work on the Granny Square quilt. We're working on the back of that now, so we're almost almost to the quilting part of that week two and by weeks I mean the first full week so every once in a while we have these weird split weeks I think June to July might actually be one of those I have to check again where like one month will end in the middle of the week and the next month will start I kind of don't count that week that's a free week so the first full or just practically full week of the month we work on the granny square quilt then that first Friday of the month uh of a new month, we break out one of our old projects that we haven't worked on in a while and try and put in an hour on that. So that's, that's finish it Friday. That's the first Friday of each new month. Week two, we work on the Splendid Sampler 2. That is a quilt project that we've been working on for ages and ages. We're about halfway done with that. Then the third week of the month, we work on the embroidery of the month. So each each month we release a new embroidery of the month pattern and then um, the third the third week is when we stitch it so that gives enough time for everyone to order and get it on time and then the last week uh, this year we changed it this year last week is kind of a free week so we might plan a little project that will last the week and that other times we might just work on unfinished work um, I would like to do more embroideries and stuff during that time and maybe like little more embroidery experiments like what we were just talking about with the coloring in the embroidery. That would be a really fun last week of the month project. 
So that's kind of kind of the deal. Uh, the third week is always the embroidery of the month. That's what we're doing doing this week. Oh, and yes, so I am using uh, I'm using three strands of floss tonight for this. This is my um, go-to. I just uh, the different number of strands uh, gives you a different thickness of floss. And I show this every once in a while when I talk about it. Here's my here's my uh, little floss thickness guide here. So this is the back stitch. Here's what one strand looks like versus two strands, three strands, four strands, five strands, six strands. And then I have some pearl cotton size five, some 12 weight one strand and 12 weight two strands and some yarn. Uh, but really this one through six is uh, the embroidery floss. So you can really see a difference. And right here, so this is six strands and this is just one strand. So look at how different that looks. It's both back stitch. Uh, but they have a completely different feel to it. So I kind of hang out in this three strand um, world just because that's what I've always done. Uh, but lately I've been uh, doing the two strands as well. So if something gets a little bit more detailed, uh, then maybe I'll use two strands. Um, but it's usually, I'm usually using two strands or three strands. I, I typically stay consistent within a piece, although you wouldn't have to really. Uh, this time I'm using three because I wanted it a little, a little bulkier, a little heftier, just subtly. And this, this, this particular, we usually stick to basic embroidery stitches and I will show you how to do those stitches as well and if I gloss over them just totally feel free to ask me to talk you through it and stuff um, I kind of do that the first time I, I do the stitch so we did that a couple days ago but I definitely can walk through any stitch if anyone's new uh, feel free to ask about it and I will I will walk through it again um, absolutely no problem and uh, for this one, we are, there's only two stitches in this one. And we typically stick to basic stitches, but every once in a while for these embroidery of the months or, you know, just for a demo, we'll, we'll throw in a little fancier stitch. Um, but for this one, it's two stitches and it's the back stitch and French knots. Ooh, dang, Luann says I made a, today I made a bunch of chocolate covered pretzels, Oreos and peanut butter cookies. And oh my gosh, this whole list is looking amazing. <laughs> so much like yummy chocolatey smells. That sounds awesome. Oh, I suppose we need a little bit. Ugh, I'm probably gonna have to get some more floss. Oh yeah, shoot. I'm gonna be, I don't think I'm gonna have enough floss to do these little French knots here with this color. Hmm. I would really be pushing it. Maybe I'll give it a try. So I'm gonna try and finish this with less floss. I'm gonna go forward a stitch and back do my final back stitch and let's see if there's enough thread here so I don't have to cut a whole new piece Ugh. French knots take a lot of thread and uh, I don't know there's a lot of French knots there maybe I'll do it it'll just be annoying <laughs> I'll just be annoyed while I do it but I'll be able to not have to get another piece of thread which would be nice too let's see see how we do it. Worse, I'll still have to get another piece of thread. All right. I don't know. Will this much thread get me all those French knots? Oh, and weaving the ends? I kind of don't think so. I'm going to give it a try, though. So weave in the ends, 
Oh, see, I'm already... <laughs> Whenever I get this short of thread, I always accidentally pull the needle off of it. All right, let's attempt some French knots here. All right. Let's, I guess, start at the bottom here and see if we can get these going. Oh, Sylvia says I still have the knicker knot mastered. Yay, yeah, I always have to think about that one a little bit. We haven't done, um, haven't needed to use that one in a little while. Okay, I need to get five more out of here. It's getting shorter and shorter. Soon I'm not gonna have enough to like hold and wrap it, but I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna give it a try. It's looking cute though. tangly too. Ooh, real tangly. Oh, I hope this doesn't mess up my knot. Okay. We're still good. Two more. Can I get these two little babies out of here? And I need enough to weave in the thread, but I'm not starting a whole new thing of floss just for one French knot, so we're gonna get it. <laughs> Squeeze it in, all right. And we did it! <laughs> all right, good. There we are, a little French knot. So let's weave in this end before I lose it. And we got all that blue done on the flowers. Oh, Amy says, I'm, I'm uh, doing the jellyfish right now and we'll be doing It'll be in French knots forever, but it'll be worth it. Yep, that jellyfish uh, pattern and or the jellyfish kit has this. It does have its fair share of um, French knots, but they are they are pretty cute in that one. All right, looking great. So all we have left in this flower area is the uh, that little little bud there. So that is the pink. Let's see. Ooh, look, this is a pretty long piece. I don't know if it's long enough. There's a lot of surface area on this one. So we'll give it a try, though. If I get it, have to get another one, we'll, we'll get another one. So let's see if I can map this out, starting down here somehow. So let's start here, maybe, and go up here, then down, then maybe get this second bit. Oh, and then down and up. Perfect, let's do that. Uh, I might actually go ahead and do that backwards and then forwards stitch to get the um, the look of that back stitch, just because it does preserve floss a little bit more. I just it, I have to think about it more, and sometimes I think the stitch is like a hair uneven, so I don't like doing that as my go-to method. But it does when um, floss is in a bind the length of floss than I do like trying to use that method. Right 
here. So I'm going to start, we'll start with a back stitch. It's always fun when um, uh, when you get this close to having a section done. Do this in two stitches. Kind of making a little larger stitches than some other places. But I wanna wanna um, preserve my thread here a little bit. I think we'll probably just go till I have this flower done tonight and start fresh tomorrow with the hummingbird. I think that'll be fun. Maybe we'll finish him all in one day. That, that seems doable. And if that's the case, we will have Friday free this week. We'll see how that goes. little corner hopefully with with this thread with this amount of floss left Sweet little bud. Huh, Sylvia's uh, washing windows tomorrow because it's supposed to be sunny. That's nice. Oh, uh, Gina's asking when I designed this, did I come up with the hummingbird first or the flowers? Huh. I'm not sure, actually. I'm gonna have to look at my uh, my. I I draw sometimes on the iPad, and it, it shows the order of how I drew it in. Um, <laughs> I might have to look back. I know I've been kind of drawing these flowers for a little while, so these flowers have been in the back of my head, like to do some flowers, kind of like this. Um, I suspect I did the hummingbird first, and then the flowers but with the like mental subliminal messaging to do these flowers. <laughs> uh, I think that's probably how it went. And then just rearranged them till they looked, till they looked right. up. Weaving that end. And I don't think I really got many stitches there, so I'm going to actually come back again for a fourth time. I think that was four. 
There we go. Okay, so there is the flower. So flowers are all done. Looking cute. Eee! So that alone would be like really pretty on, uh, you know, like the edge of a towel or something would be kind of neat. Um, this whole thing would be neat on like the edge or like a, this would be like a good square block too. It's kind of got a square look to it a little bit. Um, great though. So we'll, we'll uh, get to work on that little feller uh, tomorrow. So there he is. Um, so that'll be, that'll be fun. I'm excited to get to work on that. All right. So thank you guys again. Uh, this is really coming along. Uh, this is day three on it. So uh, yeah, about three hours to get this little bit done here. Um, I call these two movie projects. <laughs> so that that's about, we're about on pace for that. So, all right. And then we'll get working on the, the hummingbird uh, tomorrow. And I think we might actually finish it or get pretty close to finishing it tomorrow. So we might have a little bit of a free day on Friday, which will be fun. Maybe we'll take a look at that uh, coloring coloring in an embroidery. We could play around with that. Like we could, uh, we could maybe like trace one of these smaller flowers again, or even like the bud, we could trace the bud and uh, maybe color that in and, and um, stitch that all in one night. That'd be kind of fun. We'll see. So if, if we have Friday available, we'll, we'll do that. So awesome, you guys. Uh, thanks so much again for joining me. I'm just going to see if there's any other questions you have tonight. Oh, would it, oh uh, Jay and Molly, I like your floss reference chart. I need to do that. Would I use the same size needle for uh, one through six strands, or should I note what needle is best depending on how many of the strands? Uh, I always use the same needle when I'm doing embroidery. Uh, your needle, it really depends on how big a thread you're going to put in it, in it and then uh, what type of fabric you're going to be stitching into. So with, with uh, like for example, for like a tightly woven quilt sort of fabric, like a quilting weight fabric, if you're using six strands of embroidery floss and you got a needle with an eye big enough to put six strands through, that can really be tough to pull through um, quilting weight fabric. Um, so it kind of, that would, I guess that doesn't really, that doesn't really, doesn't really answer your question of, I would just use the same embroidery needle. Uh, you could use a smaller needle for the smaller thread, but you wouldn't need to. Um, you will need a needle that can get those six strands in for the six strand embroidery floss. So like I use, I, I like my um, size five embroidery needles. Uh, embroidery needles specifically have a sharp point. They're not cross stitch needles. They have a sharp point instead of a dull point and they do have a large eye and that large eye is meant to be able to get that um, six strands of embroidery floss in there. Uh, but yeah, you could use the same one for that as you use with the one strand. I think that's totally fine. Uh, where can I find the soft ribbon that comes with the kits? Oh, like uh, this ribbon. So we do have a little bit of ribbon that we are putting with the kit. So this ultimately will tie like a little bow on. Um, I don't sell that separately, but you could look at Joann's or, or somewhere else. It is a like a quarter inch um, a double, what do they call that? It's like a satin ribbon, but there's a, they call it like a double-sided satin ribbon, but there's a term for it. <laughs> but it's uh, just like a satin uh, or a satin finish. Um, mine's a quarter inch wide ribbon. So that, that will do any cute little ribbon, any cute little yarn, uh, that would, that would work too. Uh, but that's, that's the ribbon double faced satin. There's a term for it. I'm going to have to, it's just not clicking double faced satin. Okay. Deborah is saying double faced satin. I think that's, I think that's the deal. Sometimes it's, sometimes you can get it. That's just single face and just like one side will be shiny. Um, this has the, or like one side will be a little duller. Uh, this is both sides look happy and shiny. Um, but that's, that's what that is. And yeah, the quarter inch is what I use. Uh, so, 
Awesome. So I think that's that. Uh, I will be here again tomorrow on YouTube and Facebook at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So I will catch you tomorrow here, everyone. Thanks for your questions, and uh, let's we'll have some more fun stitching tomorrow. Have a good evening. Good night.